things. Number one, when you see Shannon Yinger in this building and even Coach Casey, make sure that you make it a point to say thank you to them because they're the ones that built this thing up and they did it really quickly. So make it a point to reach out to them or when you see them in the facility, walk up to them, give them a handshake, tell them you appreciate them. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pray for protection while we do this, all right? We're gonna have fun, we're gonna compete. We also wanna make sure we stay safe and healthy while we do this, okay? All right, so here we go. Father God, we come before you right now and we just wanna go ahead and first thank you for this chance to have this space. This space is awesome. It's a great chance for us to just continue to compete at a high level and to evolve as athletes. We go ahead and ask for your hand of protection right now over our boys. And I pray that as they compete against each other, I pray that for the pitchers, that their arms stay healthy through the process. I pray for the hitters, that they're safe and protected. We thank you for this opportunity. We say this in your son's name. Amen. When we look at the last 10 years of baseball pitching, wow, guys are pushing the boundaries of physics. They are throwing harder than they've ever thrown before. Evolution of technology such as rap soto and slow motion cameras, independent studies from companies such as Driveline really started to shift our mindset on uh, multiple things throughout the, the, the pitching community, whether that's warm up protocols, cool down protocols, training protocols. Starting to get measurements on what the muscles are actually doing for elite throwers. Starting to look at more about movement patterns than actual positions and uh, per se mechanics. Another shift that we've seen is weight room protocol. It used to be where baseball players, especially pitchers, um, didn't lift, didn't lift. It was seen as dangerous. Um, the risk was higher than reward. Now we are in a place where we know that uh, all baseball and softball athletes uh, should be in the weight room. Um, athletes are bigger, stronger, and faster and more efficient than they ever have been before in history. This is an exciting time to be involved in baseball pitching right now and overhand throwing development. But what we've also seen is there is this culture being created though, this culture of fear. We're seeing it primarily at the youth and high school level uh, with athletes, with coaches, with families right now. Fear of injury, uh, fear of doing too much, fear of using the wrong uh, training equipment. And this fear is not getting anyone better. This fear is not going to let athletes continue to develop. What's going to let them continue to evolve is, in fact, being fearless. It was a very clear path in 2015 how we were going to get started, and a lot of that has to do with one man, and that is Alan Jager. Hi, thanks for stopping by today. Uh, my name is Alan Jager, and I'm with Jager Sports. Alan Jager, consultant to numerous teams in Major League Baseball, joins us now among those teams, the Rangers, the Cubs, the Astros, and the Indians. Alan, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome aboard. Hey, Brian. Thanks a million for having me on. We're going to have that dude live with us here in a little bit. I'm so stoked about it. Alan Jagger, the throwing guru of Major League Baseball. Alan. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good. We got uh, Tim Fox here. He's one of our uh, lead hitting instructors and also fellow filmmaker. Nice. Here. Hey, Tim. What's up, man? And then we have Casey Fair, he's one of our pitching leads, and he's wow. also a strength conditioning coach. A good combination, man. He was like one of the first guys that I actually started training using J-bands and stuff. How many years ago? God. Six? Six Yeah, five, six years. And then over here, Lane. Hey, Lane. Lane's also one of our pitching leads, and he's a strength conditioning guy. All right, so I want to go ahead. I want to get this thing started and really just begin at where the connection between Alan Jagger and 
Extreme Baseball and Softball Club began. Alan Jager and I met in 2007 when I was at Cal State University Northridge. He was in fact our off-season throwing consultant while I was there. And man, he is the Yoda of throwing. Completely revamped the way I focus on throwing. Throwing used to be this thing that I had to get through in order to get to the mound and actually get work done. And after working with Alan, complete opposite. Throwing is an art. Throwing is a separate entity that I had to master in order for my performance off the mound to increase, in order for my health to increase. It's like a house. You gotta have the foundation in place. You have to have the frame in place. Um, I argue that you have to get the plaster in place and the electrical. That to me is everything before you get on a mound. The mound might be the, the, a nice couch, a nice TV, you know, a nice kitchenette, whatever. Kitchenette sounds like a word from the 30s. People don't realize this. When you go out to 300 or in some cases 360 feet and you come back in, you're working on everything you need to work on, on the mound, basically. You're working on feel, you're working on different release points. Your, your legs work differently at 360 versus 80 feet. Your core works differently at 340 feet versus 92 feet. There's a lot of mind-body connection. There's a lot of awareness going on. There's things you get out of long toss you may not get off the mound, period. It's like anything in life, man. It's, it's your foundation. Your foundation is not only your arm care program, but to me it's your throwing and your long toss. The bullpen, look at it as the icing on the cake. It's that simple. Yes, you can get really important things done on the mound. The mound to me is absolutely the byproduct of everything else. You're pretty prevalent now in the softball world. I know Monica Abbott is a big proponent of your philosophies and, and your tools. How could you talk to where softball is headed overall when it comes to focusing on throwing and the supporting systems? I personally did not know where softball was at five, six, seven years ago, to be honest with you. It wasn't until Monica, and then I started, you know, we started doing some softball clinics or talking to softball coaches. You know, we went out to Fullerton or went out to UCLA. Uh, we went out to the University of Arizona with Mike Andrea. So the more we were around the softball community, the more we realized that things like band work and arm care um, was sort of at the beginning stages. Throwing was, uh, I mean, I don't know how to say this, but throwing almost seemed like um, an af not an afterthought to the coaches, but to, I think to the players. The coaches knew the value. The softball world is really starting to look more heavily into throwing now. Again, if you go back to that premise, whether you're a left fielder, a first baseman, a pitcher, a softball player, a volleyball player, a water polo player, well, at the end of the day, don't we want to find out how healthy and strong and durable our arms can be? All right, well, that is going to go ahead. We're going to wrap this little session. I feel like you and we could just have this conversation all day. We're truly blessed to have you uh, talk with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for spending a half an hour with us. Stay classy. <laughs> well, thank you, and uh, thanks to all your crew, and it was nice meeting all the guys, and... Uh, Good luck to all you guys, and we'll, we'll definitely be in touch, but it's, a, it's an honor to be on. Really, it's an honor to be asked. I look forward to seeing uh, the finished project too, man. It's really cool what you're doing. So in 2016, after our first successful introduction of overhand throwing development, or OTD, into our baseball program, we wanted to go ahead and start to have that conversation of what does it look like at the softball level? What does it look like in our softball program? Because softball athletes at the youth and high school level are dealing with the exact same fears as baseball youth and high school athletes. And so we made the decision, we are gonna go ahead and we are going to trial and error this, this OTD style of training with our softball athletes. And it started with Cassidy Smith. Cassidy Smith is a member of our Extreme Alumni. She's actually still playing at Coastal Carolina right now. And we started this project called Project Cass. I'm here with Cassidy Smith, and today we are launching Project Cass. We're gonna work on her arm issues, her arm pain that she's been dealing with. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at her arm action and we're gonna see where she has a deficiency. We're gonna fix that by teaching her how to be a dynamic overhand athlete, and then also show her how baseball players prep their arms before they throw. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Project Cast was a 12-week program that we uh, did in order to create healthy pre and post throwing protocols for Cassie. Just give her some things to prepare herself at a high level every single day, but then also have her focus on active recovery following a lot of throwing. And that was the big thing for her. She had never been really used to throwing a lot. What we did is we started to just implement a lot of throwing and fixing her arm action and, and looking at movement patterns and stuff. And man, like 
she took off with it. She had so much fun with it. We had so much fun with it and there was so much success in it. She had little to no arm soreness following a day of high volume throwing. Her pop time increased as a catcher. Overall, her confidence increased. She became fearless. So after Project Cash, she was going through her training. I uh, attended an NFCA coaches clinic. Um, some of the best coaches in the country were there, Alabama, Michigan, you name it. And uh, a question was asked of, you know, what, what do you wish your athletes were better at when they enter college? And one answer in particular stood out to me, and, and a couple colleges actually said the same answer. The answer was throwing. It's amazing how many players come in and don't know the proper arm action. That was said by uh, the Alabama coach and the Michigan coach, so it was amazing just to hear them talk about the importance of throwing uh, development with, with softball athletes and that we need to be focusing on that as we prepare them for the next level. It really validated everything that we were finding um, in our research and just encouraged us to keep developing our athletes in that area and to keep being innovators in that area as well. So following Project Cast, following Coach Alexa's experience at the NFCA, we decided in that moment we were going to introduce overhand throwing development into our softball program. What are some of the stigmas when it comes to softball girls and overhand throwing? Yeah, um, girls are weak. We're not good overhand throwers. You can't throw hard. You can't throw like the boys. Guess what? Our girls can throw like the boys now. Our girls can chuck now. 74! Now we're entering into this new era of development. Something new that we've implemented this year is more mobility and focusing on more quality of movement. Uh, one thing we see with a lot of our overhand throwing athletes is that um, they are constantly fighting against their own athleticism um, in order to self-organize their mechanics. And we usually see pitchers move poorly for two reasons. Uh, one, they're just immobile. They're immobile and they're weak or two, they've just been taught incorrectly uh, how to move. So we've really prioritized the shift into moving better. The biggest thing that we've done is provide opportunities for them to learn how to be their own best coach and put them in positions for them to succeed. We're also creating relationships with other leaders in our sports. So whether it's Rap Soto or it's Jager Sports or it's Driveline Baseball, we're connecting with the top leaders and minds in our sport because we want to continue in our education. There's a saying in baseball, if you stop learning, you die. We cannot stop learning about this game, about how we should move as athletes, specifically overhand athletes. Yeah, Brian Page with Rapsodo. Brian, thank you first of all for letting us come in. First question is going to be this, and number one is, you know, what metrics do you guys actually measure for baseball pitchers? How are those metrics of value to those athletes? On the pitching side, uh, most of it's around spin-related data. Uh, so we first give the velocity, so out of the hand, traditional velocity. Then we take it a step farther with spin rate, so we then know uh, if a player is a high spin rate guy versus low spin rate, um, then how they can utilize those RPMs in the zone. It goes a lot farther to be able to show break, so horizontal, vertical break of the pitch, the spin axis. So we often are 
Uh, you hear that Rapsodo pitch design, uh, so players can actually design each pitch in their arsenal. At the youth level, how would that sure. be of, you know, of importance to them in learning their spin rate and then also the spin axis, learning how their ball's moving? So at the lower level, uh, one of the most basic things is just uh, the gyro degree. Um, so first, just teaching a player to stay behind the ball. Um, so very often a young player will try to compensate and really try to throw hard um, and just naturally more of rifle spin, throw it like a football because uh, they're compensating, trying to throw harder. They get that natural tilt instead of staying back here. Hey, how are you guys? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. something fun? All yeah, hey there. Nice to meet you. I'm Frank. My hands on nice, nice to meet you. Meet Frank, you. how are you? Paul Trump. Paul, I'm doing yeah. great. Thank nice. you. Cody, nice, Cody, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Tim. Hey, Tim. It's nice, nice to meet you. Stuff. Interview over. Right. It's time to play with some Rapsodos. Hey, what's going on, Extreme Family? We are filming right now for the Evolve Series Episode 2, and that led us to going to Rapsodo. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do live ABs right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pitch live to Cody. We warmed up. We look good. Um, let's just try not to kill Cody. That's, yes. that's really what we're Pray going for me. right here. Pray for me. If you're going to pan over to this, you're going to see pitch data and hit data. Oh, yeah. and Ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's a knock. Cody, green light? Yeah. Red means stop. <laughs> that's a strike? I guess the shit out of here. Hold up. You guys know how it is. Just outside, ball one. Ah! 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 That's how I got out. Ah! Look out, man! He got the camera, man! It's not every day you wake up and see 90 mile per hour fastball. 89. Ooh! Welcome back. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Are you watching it? Yeah. Yeah. 89. A little, oh, you'll get 90. <coughs> Madeline, baby. Four count? Four count. Let's go. Challenge him, Paul. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 90. Ooh, 90. 90. <laughs> Dude, you need to go get a tryout. <laughs> 
All right, Paul, how'd it feel to get back on the mound again? I mean, from a competitive standpoint, it felt really good. Um, I can feel it, though, right now. I probably threw maybe 15, 20 pitches, max intent, and uh, I'm feeling it right now. But it was fun. It was a great time. I got to strike Cody out, so that's all I care. <laughs> What was that? Slider. Oh, that hurt. Oh, boy. Dude. Didn't hit me, thank you. <laughs> so we want to go ahead and just say thank you uh, to Brian Rapsoda for letting us come in and not only interview him and learn more about Rapsoda, but also come in here, play with your guys' toys and, and get after it and kind of get that little competitive fire going again. So thank you. Yeah, yeah thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Appreciate it, man. Get you guys some hats. Hey, 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 I want to have a moment. Tim actually has a hat on right now. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tim has a hat on. Oh, he took it off. Here we go. Hey, all right, welcome to our building. is currently getting light work in. Wait, you don't have a... And we're live here. Welcome to Tool Time with Coach Paul and Coach Lane. We're going to go ahead and show you the tools that we use in network pitching. We're going to have to describe each tool, by the way, in under 10 seconds, or at least try. All right, first things first, this is a lacrosse ball. This is a great soft tissue uh, tool, and it causes a lot of pain, but it's fantastic. It's good pain. Foam roller. Foam roller, good for the same thing, soft tissue work, getting the muscle fascia release. One of my personal favorites, the Chinese torture stick. Now, I don't think they actually call this the Chinese torture stick. These are our tools that just help break up the body. Body blade. And what body blade is complete without its body blade DVD? Super 6 and Power 10. Great tool we use to get blood flow to the shoulder, to the elbow area. Those are J-Bands uh, by Jagger Sports. And what they do is they just help activate the body. Uh, pre-throwing, but they're also good for post-throwing, just for recovery, so great tool. We love this tool. Messing ball, just a great tool to be able to start moving stuff and throwing stuff and making loud noises. Loud boom blocks, because it's not extreme pitching network training unless there's loud music, specifically Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Weighted baseball, it's a baseball, just a little heavier. Okay, all right, so this is actually a serious one right here. <laughs> Why weighted baseballs? Like, what makes weighted baseballs valuable? So we use these to be able to learn how to train and get our arms in positions that we generally wouldn't hit with just a five ounce baseball. So with the heavier baseball, we're putting into a little more layback. Also, when we throw heavier implements, contrary to popular belief, we actually put less force on our arm when we're actually throwing. So it's a safer way to throw as well. Plyo care balls and so we use these as part of our pre-throwing and post-throwing uh, protocols. Durable, uh, really help us to just move more efficiently. Amazing tool. Are we missing anything? I do not believe so. I think we got it all. I think we got it all. All right, all right. Tool time. You stay classy now. All right, so I have some free time tonight and I want to go ahead and just step on in and look at 9U Camillo. We got Coach Kyle over here. He's leading the network pitching hour right now. Let's go find some of his kids now. Let's go see what they're up to. What are you working on right now? Um, rockers. You're doing rockers off of a flat ground? And what does that help you with? Um, I think pitching more strikes instead of balls. That sounds like a good answer. What's your name? Maddox Smalley. Maddox Smalley. You know what you're working on right now? Rockers. You're working on rockers going down the mound, but what are you throwing right there? What is that in your hand? I don't care. All right, did you know that that yellow is close to a baseball weight? You having fun? Yeah. Do you enjoy learning yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah, you're learning a lot? Yeah. Awesome, man. Is Coach Kyle awesome? Yeah. Great interview. Give me some. I see you working. Come on, Jude. Are they throwing quality strikes to you right now? Kind of. Kind of? Network pitching. You know, they're nine years old. They just started pitching. Are they loving it? Are they learning? Yeah, for sure. You know, they're really, they're learning a lot. They're having a good time. There's a lot of drills that they're competing against each other, but they're rooting each other on too. And they're learning how to move and how to throw a baseball. So it's been a great time. It's really important as much as we talk about developing into these high level athletes and fearlessly attacking, it's also important to remember 
We just gotta love the game too, and that's what we really try to instill with our young pitchers: is fall in love with the game, throw really well, move, you know, more athletically. Like that's it. That's the name of the game. What's up, homie? It is on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> what is? Dude, the live cages are being built today. Check it out, man. Under construction. Oh, sick, dude. That's pretty tight, man. Tanks off all your pictures. All right, dude. Sounds good. Hey, good news, man. Sick. Yeah, later. What's up, Shannon? What's up, This is the guy we're going to talk to right now about this. Okay, so Cody, Cody reached out to me and Cody said that Live AB Space is going up. Live AB Space is rocking. That leaves us perfect timing, right on schedule. Wow, you really had to walk around. Give us the vision a little bit, like what's going where and... Sure, sure. We're gonna have two cages basically for Live AB. Our pitchers are gonna be pitching from there. Actually, hitters so we'll are gonna be throwing be, this way. We're gonna be throwing this way. Okay. It's gonna be fun. Nice. It's gonna be, be a blast. Roof is going up on a Saturday. We'll be smashing balls tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the new space. It's complete. Shannon and Casey knocked it out, man. So basically what we're working on right now is we're moving the mounds. We're gonna go and actually start live tonight. And really excited about it. Really excited. Nervous, but exciting. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> good? Oh, normal. That's actually a lot harder than it looks. It's live ABs, baby. I can't do it. <laughs> what? You gonna be thrown tonight? Yeah. You gonna throw some cheese? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Throw in the chair. Anyone in particular you wanna face? Maybe Atkins and Smock. Okay. I, mean, they, I guess they're the people I'm closest with on the team. West too. Okay, man, Live ABs. Yes, sir. Happening tonight. Yes, sir. Hey, Live ABs, baby. It's Live ABs, baby. So there's this concept that we talk about, and that is fearlessly attack. When you hear that phrase, fearlessly attack, what do you think of right away? No holding back. No holding back. I love it. In and up. Attacking the hitters. Toeing the rubber. Yeah, that's where most guys go. And the reality is, yeah, that's true, but it's more than that. It's actually about what are you doing away from the mound? What are you doing away from the lines? Are you doing your protocols? Are you staying committed? If the answer is yes, you're going to have a good season. You're going to produce. You're gonna stay healthy. It's about preparation, guys, and you guys did that this year. Having that, knowing that you guys did more than the other guy, that's why you're gonna succeed. And when you don't succeed, you have a plan to fix it. That's the most important thing, guys. You guys are gonna be the ones that have a plan and doing something different. So I challenge you to be different. Be different than who you're gonna play, because guess what? How many dudes that you know are gonna do your post throw for 15 minutes after they get done throwing? That's the stuff that's gonna separate you. Okay? It's not the sexy stuff. It's not the stuff about hitting the home runs. It's about the dude who's gonna do the little things on the outside that no one else is doing. Because it's about building for long term. If you guys can build that foundation to come back to each and every time, then you guys are gonna know when it gets hard, when you just went 0 for 3, when you just didn't, you couldn't throw a strike, that you know you have a plan to fix it. Because you are gonna fix it, and then you're gonna come out and you're gonna shove, and that's what's gonna make you guys the, the better players on your team. I want us to focus on fearlessly attacking the label that we're given. If the label that we're given is, hey, I'm going to be on varsity this year, I want us to focus on fearlessly attacking that label and being the best that we can possibly be and making uh, an impact for our team. If the label is something that you did not want, you have to fearlessly attack that and find your way to climb up the ladder. You have to find a way to be a good teammate, to find a way to, like Lane said, do those little things right because your coach will see that and in the long run, that's the stuff that will um, accumulate and make you a better athlete. Five years ago, we wanted to change the culture of throwing. We wanted to change the culture of fear. We're doing that right now. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for us. I'm excited to see our athletes fearlessly attack.
first thing that comes to your mind when you think of extreme pitching? Powerful, having a plan, being aggressive. I like bio care. I'll say the arm care. Extreme pitching, what do you think about? Paying attention to details, trying to get more power out of these kids. Cutting edge. And getting geared up before we even throw a ball. Breakdown in detail. We're thoroughly enjoying every part of our first year. OTD, overhand throwing development. A system to develop the athlete.